ChatGPT just got a massive update, which makes BART pretty much useless. Microsoft is adding insane AI tools into Windows. Google will be releasing Gemini soon. OpenAI has revealed DALI 3, which is way better than Midjourney. All of these announcements are crazy, but we're just getting started. My name is David Andre, and here are 12 massive AI news you can't ignore. ChatGPT just received one of the biggest AI updates of all time. It can now, for the first, well, for the second time, access the internet. The first time we had the browse feature that was like a few months ago but then OpenAI removed it but right now they added it and it's way better this update is coming just a couple of days after google gave bart a massive update they gave it the youtube extensions gmail extensions all of the new extensions so i guess this is like an open ai's response to google saying that no ChatGPT is still the king of language models right now the new browsing plugin is only available to plus users but open ai said on twitter that over the next few weeks everybody will get this feature but this is isn't the only ChatGPT update. OpenAI has recently announced that GPT-V is coming. A lot of people think that GPT-V stands for 5 because, you know, V is 5 in Roman numerals, but actually V stands for vision. This is the multimodal capability we've seen like in March when they revealed GPT-4 for the first time, you know, the video where Greg Brockman was showing all the features. That's the vision. The vision capability, they had it for six months now, but right now they are releasing it on the mobile app where you can take a photo of anything, circle the part of the photo, like I've seen in the demonstration it was a bike and you know, you can ask how to repair this bike, you can ask how to adjust the tires, anything you want really, and the language model will understand exactly what you mean. It works the same way as DALI or Midjourney, but in reverse, so it can analyze the image and recognize the parts, and it can tell you exactly what to do and how to do it, which is pretty amazing. It looks like this feature will be only available for the mobile app, so if you don't have ChatGPT installed on your phone, make sure to do that. But man, OpenAI has been on fire lately. DALI 3 has been one of the biggest announcements of the year. Honestly, it might destroy Midjourney. From what I've seen, DALI 3 is like infinitely better at generating text. You can talk to it in natural language. You know, in Midjourney or Stable Diffusion, you have to use this prompt engineering, like using commas, give realistic, lighting, high contrast, and stuff like that. In DALI, you just type out the sentence. The craziest part is that it can be much more complicated than Midjourney. You can include like multiple characters, the background, what's happening on the side. It can do all of that. Midjourney usually can only focus on one, maybe two things. But DALI 3, DALI 3 has no problem doing super complex compositions and environments. And what's even better is that OpenAI said that they will be adding DALI 3 right into ChatGPT. If DALI 3 is completely integrated with ChatGPT+, you will get so many tools for just 20 bucks a month. That's insane. Microsoft is also making some major moves in the AI space. The next Windows update will have a bunch of AI integrations. The biggest AI change is the release of Microsoft Copilot. You know, the name is kind of generic. A lot of tools are named Copilot. But what this means is that Windows will have a native AI tool, a sidebar, which is powered by GPT-4, that you can use in any app and all times. If this is half as good as I think it could be, it would be a massive productivity change because you'll be able to use GPT-4 in every single application even the ones that don't have like native AI in them. And what's even better is that Microsoft said that this update will be free. So if you have Windows, you're set. One of the most surprising news has been seeing Amazon enter the AI race. They've recently announced a 4 billion investment into Anthropic, which is uh, one of the biggest AI startups. I feel like Anthropic is kind of underrated. Everybody is focusing on OpenAI, Google, but Anthropic is, is like the third biggest player in the AI space right now, especially after the, they released Claude 2, and it has 100,000 token window, which is way bigger than GPT-4. This is a pro tip. If you're using ChatGPT for school or work, you probably want to try Claude Claude 2, because Claude 2 is very different than the GPT models. While it might not just be as smart as GPT-4, it's definitely one of the best language models out there. But a lot of people are kind of underestimating Anthropic, and right now, especially after the $4 billion investment from Amazon, they're gonna do some major damage in the AI field. Google also gave us some major announcements. It really seems like they're doing everything they can to catch up to OpenAI, because their AI strategy lately has been very aggressive. The biggest Google news is that Gemini is coming soon and Google has opened the testing to external companies, which is pretty huge if you think about it. From the news we've heard, it should be way better than GPT-4. It's basically Google's equivalent to GPT-5. And, you know, they've started giving it to external companies. It means that Gemini is potentially a few months ahead. I wouldn't be surprised if OpenAI followed the release of Gemini with GPT-5. And all of that is coming within the next six months, maybe even the next three months. So, man... <laughs> 
what a time to be alive. At this point, everyone knows that Meta is taking a completely different approach to AI. Mark Zuckerberg has decided to open source everything, which is the exact opposite of what Google and OpenAI are doing. And less than 24 hours ago, Meta has unveiled its new AI studio. It's basically a platform that allows businesses to create their own custom chatbots specifically for their needs. These chatbots can be integrated directly into Facebook and Instagram with the goal of making the customer user experience better. Like this is basically for their ad business. Like Zuck is planning to use generative AI to make it easier for everybody to run ads on Facebook. The point is that you'll be able to like directly create the copy for their ad. All of that will be done by AI. Most people suck at making ads. So this is like Zuckerberg's way of making money with ads. He doesn't need to make money with these language models. He's gonna make money by making his other tools better. Zuck is using AI to kind of destroy his rivals while also implementing it into his core businesses, which is, you know, how he makes money. It's kind of genius if you think about it. A lot of artists and musicians are worried about AI and whether it's gonna replace them. But recently, the CEO of Warner Music gave his opinion and honestly, I kind of agree with him. So this was discussed at the Code Conference and he believes that AI will significantly impact the music industry, which, you know, by this point is kind of obvious. But he said that the musicians and artists should embrace it instead of fighting it. Because let's be honest, fighting AI is a very dumb strategy. The CEO compared AI music to user-generated content on YouTube because, you know, somebody still has to make it. So it takes still like the human artistic touch to recognize what's actually good. Because like we've seen the Drake songs and the Weekend songs, we don't see the millions of AI-generated songs that suck. Only the great ones get to the top, obviously. You still need to understand music composition, producing, mixing, all of that to create a great song with AI. It will be easier than ever before, which is amazing because a lot more artists and musicians will be created thanks to AI. I imagine a year from now or two years from now, you just type out what kind of song you want and you just like using a chat interface, you're literally making the adjustments. So you don't have to learn like Ableton or FL Studio. You can do all of that with natural language and that's coming very soon. OpenAI is working on a secret project with Johnny Ive. And if you don't know who Johnny Ive is, he's the guy who designed the iPad, the iPhone. Basically, when Steve Jobs was alive, Johnny Ive was his right-hand man. Like, they did everything together. Because, you know, Johnny Ive is one of the greatest designers of all time. And he was even knighted in Great Britain for his services to design and innovations. There are no details about what that product is. All we know that Sam Altman and Johnny Ive have been in talks about creating some mysterious hardware product. And also Masayoshi San, the CEO of SoftBank and one of the craziest entrepreneurs of all time, is reportedly involved in this deal. So I don't know, man, but this is very interesting. One of the most promising new AI startups is Mino. Funnily enough, this startup has been founded by the former CEO of Tinder. Recently, they have raised $3.9 million in a seed round by Sequoia which is, you know, one of the biggest investment firms in the world. The goal of Mino is to fight loneliness with an AI-powered chatbot. It's interesting because recently I've heard Brian Chesky, the CEO of Airbnb, talk about the same thing, that loneliness is one of the biggest issues in America and in the world right now. So it's interesting that a lot of these startups are trying to solve the loneliness problem. You know, a lot of people don't even realize that this is a real problem. Now, what makes Mino different from all the other chatbots is that they'll be focused on making it a personal mentor, which is, you know, quite useful if you think about it. ChatGPT is more like a tool, Pi, which is more like a companion. So Mino, if it's a personal mentor, everybody wants a mentor, right? The famous YouTuber Quebblecop has recently announced that he's stopping the use of AI in his videos. The video was titled The End of Quebblecop AI, but it has been revealed that the video was actually made with his new AI system, which has been mis met with mixed reactions. A lot of people are impressed by, you know, the way he's going because honestly, it is the future. Like a lot more creators are going to be using AI. If you like it or not, AI is here to stay. But the reason why the reaction has been so negative is that the fans kind of feel cheated. They're used to seeing him talk and be on camera for years. So like if you have an, an emotional attachment to somebody and you're a fan of somebody and then you see that person replacing himself with an AI, some people think that he's trying to trick the fans. Obviously it's not cool. Personally, I think he made a mistake by revealing it too soon. I think like he should have slowly integrated AI into his videos. I don't know, replacing some lines of his voice, then maybe using one or two clips with the new face AI instead of just rushing it and like trying to make the entire video in with AI, which is, you know, kind of weird. Now, if you want to learn more about AI, then please subscribe. It takes just two seconds.